Hey guys, here's another GFC review video. It's been a year since we bought it and we spent a lot of nights camping in it. So I thought I'd update you on my opinions and experiences about using it. So in my first video, if you haven't seen it, I went into detail about all of the features and mechanisms and how the GFC works. So if you're interested in all those intricacies, please go check out the first video. I'm not gonna go over all of those again, that way you guys aren't bored uh, seeing it twice. Um, this is going to be more based on just my experiences with it, any complaints I have, anything I'm loving about it, and maybe I'll touch on some additions I made inside and out to it. Uh, so yeah, let's cover those. So to start off, this is a CVT uh, ladder. I switched to the black one since the first video, if any of you noticed that. I had the iCamper ladder with the slanted steps. It was definitely more comfortable, but I'm big on aesthetics. So I went to the black ladder. It's definitely not as comfortable. These are straight steps, so it kind of hurts the feet climbing up, but I think it looks a lot better. So that's what I switched up. And then adding the rug to the bottom, if you guys haven't done that, it's so convenient taking your shoes off than standing on the rug before you climb up. That makes it great. So up here inside the tent, we've made a couple additions. Uh, we've got the overhead storage uh, bag system by Vernacular. It's got a zipper pouch on it. I throw my phone, my keys. I even have a battery pack up there that I charge my phone with at night. And then just in front of that um, is a magnetic iPad mount. That's super nice. We watch Netflix movies on the iPad at night. And then for the sleeping arrangement, I'm still running the Xped Mega Mat Duo that I touched on in my first video. That thing's so comfortable. Um, it's some extra work, obviously, instead of just the standard GFC mattress, but it's so comfortable. You, you got to try it. Um, and then we've got a downfilled REI double wide sleeping bag. So both of us are sleeping in one giant sleeping bag. It's super comfortable, super warm. So in a little more detail, here's the vernacular storage system, the iPad mount. It's magnetic swivel with a double stick uh, steel plate that attaches to the roof. And then I have these LED lights upstairs and downstairs. When I bought them, they were called uh, truckparts.parts. It switched names, so just go on the GFC forum um, and the current info about how to get them is on there. Down in the corner is the dimmer switch and how to change it from red to white. So here's the downstairs portion of those lights that I talked about up top. Uh, again, these do red and white coloring. They're double stick taped uh, to the panels. They're on all three downstairs panels. This back one is my favorite. It's so convenient to have light directly above the tailgate for cooking or whatever task you're doing on your tailgate area. They're dimmable, just like the upstairs is. Um, the red, as probably most of you know, don't attract bugs, so I do the red color quite a bit. Um, they're super low voltage being LED. They hardly use any power, and uh, they work great. So on the roof area of the GFC, it's got the three beef bars that I bought uh, initially right from the beginning when I had them install the GFC on the truck. Um, I had an issue with the beef bars, um, but I literally contacted GFC via email on the weekend and they responded to me same day on the weekend. Uh, I think it was a Saturday and it was covered under warranty, the, the issue I was having. And by Sunday, I was getting a shipping confirmation from them. So that's pretty unbelievable customer service. So it started out with a slightly negative, you know, a warranty issue with them. And within 24, 48 hours, it was resolved and my new product was shipped to me. So I commend them for that. Since I'm up in the front of the truck, I'll just do a quick rundown of everything you can see in the video here. I'll just start at the bottom and go to the top of the tent. Um, so I've got a C4 uh, front bumper steel, um, powder coated in uh, satin black. I have a whole bunch of Baja Designs lights, so I've got the S8 Amber um, Fog Pocket Kit for a Tundra in Amber, uh, three LP9s in clear. They have the black plastic covers on them currently. I have a Warren winch with Factor 55 Fairlead uh, and equipment up there. Um, in the grill, I'm using an SDHQ um, bracket specific for the Tundra for another clear S8 bar, and then the SDHQ hood bulge mount kit for an amber S8 inside the hood cowl here. Um, on the A-pillars, I got 
uh, another two LP series lights with black covers on them. And then up top quickly, I've got a couple Max Tracks with Axia Alloy Max Tracks mounts and two 100 watt Renogy solar panels. So one little thing that is kind of annoying that some of you GFC owners have uh, found and problem solved already is when it rains, um, it drips off here and you can probably see this kind of calcium streak on my window. Um, I forget the exact name, but on the GFC forum, uh, somebody made little rain gutter collectors here to redirect the water. So that's definitely in my future. Um, this comes off if you clean the window, it's not a permanent thing. So don't be too scared about that. It's just kind of an annoyance. So I'm definitely gonna add those rain gutters. I've got GFC brackets right here holding some Baja design lights and my PCI race radio antenna. A couple more aftermarket pieces that aren't GFC specific, but they're great. And uh, I just wanted to talk about them for a second. Mountain hatch tailgate table. I've had this uh, for quite a while now and I still love it. It cleans so easy. I use it as a cutting board a lot of times. Um, and then this drawer system, I built this drawer system. Um, it turned out great. I haven't built one before and I'm super happy with it. So it's the length of the bed. So what is it? Five and a half or five foot seven for a Tundra, um, 60 inch drawer slides, um, some industrial style, thin carpet on the top, some truck bed liner coating on the drawer faces with spring loaded handles. Um, the little red knobs are the locks in the corners and here's how I store all my stuff in them. So they're made out of all birch um, with a clear lacquer finish on it, three quarter inch plywood. I did little quarter inch um, drawer dividers and I routed slots every six inches or so down the length so you can select whatever size divider you want to do. I keep my stove, my Blackstone, my propane, um, gloves to cook with, um, knives, my toilet, our portable toilet thing sits here. I can pull out both drawers at the same time. It's just a ton of storage, like propane heater, dishware, Yeti cups, so much of the stuff's in here and it's so convenient. Um, I highly recommend figuring out a drawer system for your truck bed. So on one of our trips, when we were out in Joshua Tree, we were getting super high wind gusts, probably 40 to 60 miles an hour, middle of the night. And when we were sleeping up top, the roof of the GFC started to close down on us. Um, the struts just weren't stiff enough to hold it up. Um, but kind of as a disclaimer, I do have two uh, huge solar panels up there and max tracks. So I'm sure that played a factor in it uh, having extra weight and getting pushed down but that was the one and only time that happened to us um, but one of the awesome features about the gfc uh, we just grabbed the x-ped out of the top we closed it down i moved a few things down here below on my drawer system and we just put the x-ped down here and had the sides all closed up and we were totally comfortable down here out of the wind um, super awesome benefit of having uh, this enclosure as part of the gfc um, separate from the tent. So we hung out down here, kept us out of the wind and the weather, and it was great. So something I just added before this trip um, is this new little attic storage area. It's just pieces from Amazon. I might have 20 bucks into it, and it's not completely done, but it's bungee cord straps. I have a down blanket, and then my down sleeping bag goes on the other half of it. Um, so I'm using the GFC provided bolt locations that are throughout the frame. And I just added little D-ring tabs to be able to attach the net system to it. Here's a close up of using the GFC provided bolt locations. And then I just added the uh, black D-ring mounts. This is not final. That's just to hold it up there temporarily while I figure out a different idea. And then I did D-ring mounts in the back and over here on the side. So one of the last things I want to touch on is a combination of an aftermarket product and coupling it with a GFC feature, which is the track system around the exterior of the tent. This is force protector gear. It's a uh, thermoshield uh, shade paneling. It greatly reduces the temperature underneath. It's super lightweight, um, pretty easy to set up. Initially, I was planning to go the whole 270 awning route, um, 
but the weight of them just kind of steered me away. You know, 50, 70, 90 pounds for some of those 270 awnings. And then you got to uh, figure out bracketing off the side of the GFC. And the price point of those 270s is, uh, can be really high, you know, 1500 bucks, two grand, depending on which brands you get. Um, so the force protector gear, super lightweight. I've only got about 11 pounds of product here between the paneling and the poles. These are green elephant poles. They're right on Amazon. Um, I've been using them a few times now and they're great. Um, so the way I mount the force protector gear to the truck um, is a bracket and I'll show you a clip of that right now. So using a regular T-nut through GFC or one of the aftermarket companies, I got this black bracket off of Amazon, um, which is made for boats. Um, so this little silver pin here would go through the hole with the GF, uh, excuse me, with the force protector gear paneling going in there. So this would pin it to the truck and then you just use poles and 550 cord or straps or whatever you uh, see fit to secure it out on the end. So to be able to see it kind of in use, you can see the force protector gear slides between the black bracket like I talked about. Um, I've got a Baja Design rear chase light mounted here. And then force protector gear includes this uh, rubbery piece to kind of protect whatever people have mounted back here. Me specifically, I got the light. So when, the, when this moves during the wind or something, this padding protects it. It's super simple and quick and a lightweight solution for mounting it to the GFC. Before I geek out any further on the force protector gear stuff, just throwing it out there, not sponsored by them, I bought their product. I'm just real excited about them. It's super versatile. It pairs great with the F, uh, with, excuse me, with the GFC. Uh, the GFC is known for being lightweight. Force protector gear is lightweight, so why not put them together? Um, so a few of the super good features about FPG. This is one panel. Um, you can buy one, two, three panels, and you're just gonna add these small bags. Um, and the panel is just inside the bag. So as you can see, I've got one off the back of the truck here. I've got one uh, other panel going off to the right side. So that's two panels, so two of these. I've got a third one here. Um, say the sun's uh, way off to my right and setting over there. You just throw another panel off the back here. Snap it to the snaps that are up here. Go down to the ground without any poles. Or you can do things like if the sun's over here for some reason. Lower this corner down, tighten this strap, and now it's creating uh, or casting a shadow that way. You can't do that with a 270 awning. It's not this versatile. You have to buy the wall system on the 270s that Velcro or zipper on. They're super expensive. They're hundreds of dollars for the wall system. Um, and then you got to carry them around and still sometimes the wall doesn't create enough shadow for you. So some simple 550 cord, some straps, some stakes, and you can make this in any arrangement you can imagine. You could make a small city out of it if you want to buy enough panels. Um, and the heat reduction underneath them is unbelievable. Something we've experienced that um, people experience in all brands of tents is condensation. Um, we live kind of coastal area of San Diego, so we do a lot of beach camping. Um, so it's humid and we'll get some condensation inside the tent if it's completely closed up. So a lot of you might know this already and it's been talked about on the GFC forums, but if you open these triangle front windows on both sides and just get some airflow in there, it solves the huge majority of your condensation issues. Um, so that's a pretty easy solution to a relatively minor problem. Um, we've been camping in this in St. George, Utah in probably the 90s. It was super hot. Um, opened up all the windows, had a little electric powered fan up there just for some airflow, and we were able to sleep through the night. And then we've been down into the low 30s in, in local mountains. Um, and with our down uh, sleeping bag that I was just talking about, um, we were totally comfortable in there. I've never had to use a heater up there. Yeah, I don't camp in 10, 20 degree snow weather. Just I'm Southern California. It's not, it's not kind of a reality of our camping style. So in closing, after a year of camping in the GFC, still loving it. Um, when I bought mine, it was like a nine month lead time. 
Uh, I think they've cut that down to 10 or 12 weeks now, which is crazy fast. Um, sure, we've had a couple minor issues with it, some learning curve stuff, but we totally recommend it to somebody checking them out. Uh, we got a lot of stuff planned this spring and summer for camping. We're going to be filming it, posting it on YouTube. So please like and subscribe to follow along with those trips. You can also check us out on Instagram and appreciate you watching the video and see you on the next one. <laughs>